spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Well, praise the Lord and hello, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Speaks, and I'm Mike McKenzie. Uh, I have the great privilege of being pastor of the uh, sweet folks down at the First Baptist Church in Plainville, Illinois. Yes, there is a town called Plainville. <laughs> you know, it used to be called something else, but somebody called it Plainville, and it's you know it's Plainville. Uh, but we're glad to be here with you today, and we're going to bring forth the Word of God to, uh, for you into your life, and uh, hopefully we can challenge you, and uh, we can get something going in your heart that would cause you to pick up your Bible and open it up and uh, find the treasures from it that God wants mm -hmm. for you to have. It's my privilege today to have a dear friend, uh, Mr. Bill Dexheimer, He's from Hannibal, Missouri, and uh, Bill also has a brother named Dave Dexheimer. I do, thank the Lord. And they're both crazy, and, uh, <laughs> but I enjoy being around them because I'm kind of a nut myself. Uh, but today we are going to uh, look uh, uh, at the testimony of the church and uh, different aspects of, of things today that are important that maybe are being left out of the church and out of our lives. And uh, to get started, I'm going to ask Bill if he would to lead us in a word of prayer. Amen. Thank you. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to give you praise, give you glory, give you thanks. And we stand again in awe of you. Mm. We recognize that you are our perfect Father. Oh, God. We thank you for your guidance in our life, for your watch care over us daily. We thank you for the great salvation yes, we God. have in your son, Jesus. Yes, God. We thank you for the privilege of uh, sharing together in your truths, in your word. And we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is living and active and yeah. more powerful than any yeah. double-edged sword, Amen. penetrating yeah. to the uh, soul and spirit. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would help us to be faithful to your word. God. Help us to be obedient to your word and help us, Lord, to share the truths of your word in a way that would exalt you and honor you. And I thank you for this time together with Mike and pray you'd be honored and glorified in it. In yes, Jesus' God. name, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, Bill's family uh, had a great influence on my life. I, I deeply loved your mom and dad. Amen. They were, I mean, uh, I could go by their house and the coffee would be on and I could sit at the table and talk with them. Uh, Bill, talk a little <laughs> bit about uh, your salvation experience and what caused you to come to faith in Christ? Well, uh, be honest with you, I, I share with you truthfully, I was blessed to have Christian parents. Yes, you were. Uh, both my mother and my father loved the Lord and served the Lord, and they took us to church when we were able to get to church, and we lived not far from the Southside Baptist Church there in Hannibal and we were very active. And I came to faith in the Lord Jesus really pretty early, about nine years old. And uh, the Lord uh, moved in my life. And truthfully, I'll tell you a little quick story, Mike. You may not even know this. The Lord called me to preach early on. And so I preached my first sermon not too long after that, about three minutes as I remember <laughs> when, when uh, the pastor there gave me opportunity. <clears throat> and for years, uh, I did not really surrender to that call, and uh, it hasn't been too many years ago, 1987, when the Lord spoke to my heart and said, uh, you better give in now. And uh, he spoke to me very plainly, Mike, in that uh, I used, tried to use my family as an excuse not to do it, uh, because <laughs> I said, who's going to take care of my family if I quit my job and I go back to school and get my education? He said, I can take care of your family if you'll obey me. But you can't if you don't. Wow. I still get emotional over that, Mike, because sure. the Lord made it plain that he was going to take care of us if yeah. we would be obedient to him. So I surrendered uh, to, I say surrendered, I, I really thank God for the privilege now of uh, uh, being called to preach and teach the word of God. And 
And so I've done that since 1987 and have pastored several churches and in interim, et cetera. But it, I just thank the Lord that he never took his hand off of me, um, yeah. that he uh, was faithful and, and kept speaking to me and kept directing me. So we're here today because of what God did and Amen. who God is Amen. rather than what Bill did or who Bill is. So. Well, I, I, I thank <clears throat> God that uh, uh, you've been a part of my life mm. and I've enjoyed the fellowship we've had together, particularly mm when we talk about the scriptures. Hallelujah. So let's, let's, um, let's get on it. Um, years ago, I was reading in 1 Thessalonians 5. Mm. And there's a, a listing, uh, let, me, let me read it. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with verse 14. Uh, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. And then verses 16, 17, and 18. Mm. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for mm. you. Mm. And I looked at that and I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> Paul has given us in this, this book of the Bible. Hallelujah the standing orders from God to the believer. Mm. Now, in the American military, there are standing orders. Yeah, you there. know that because you, Bill is a Vietnam veteran. Yeah. Uh, today, I kind of checked on this a few months ago. Mm. Today, there are 11 standing orders of the American military. Mm. One of them is you salute <laughs> a higher officer, okay? There are standing orders in the Bible. Amen that God has given to us mm -hmm. through the Spirit that we are to obey. Yeah. It's, it's not a suggestion. Mm. Uh, we don't really have any free will in it except to be disobedient. Amen. And he says here, rejoice always. We, we've talked about this before. Yes, we have. Rejoice always. What mm. does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean to rejoice always? When you and I, when we've, as you said, we talked about that in another passage of Scripture recently. And when you look at the Scripture and it says rejoice always, it, it is an opportunity for us to reflect on who God is and rejoice in the, in the person of God. And, and our hearts should just be filled with jubilance and, and filled with excitement the more we think about our God, who He is, mm. and what He has done to make it possible for us to be His children. He, before the creation of the world, He had the plan of salvation sure. in place. And in His perfect time, it came to fruition. And He called us into that by His Spirit. And we ought to be rejoicing continually in our spirit because of who God is and what God has done. And I share with people too, always keep in mind of what God is going to do. Too. And we can rejoice oh. in those truths that will bring the peace that we're looking for and will bring the contentment in the midst of tribulation. Well, don't you think that the uh, centerpiece for the rejoicing is Calvary oh. and the empty tomb? Don't you think? I do, but I, uh, in addition to that, Mike, I think it is the resurrection of Jesus yeah. Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> in His great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed. And so... We can celebrate the, certainly the crucifixion because that's where God judged our sin and where he put final judgment on, on that. But also we can rejoice in the resurrection Absolutely. of Jesus Christ because it is in that resurrection that we are given the new birth. Oh, praise God. And we just praise him for that. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Isn't, Hallelujah. That, isn't that something? Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, I think what's missing from... Uh, the church in many cases mm. is this awe oh, yeah. at what God has done in Christ. Yes, amen. I mean, just think about it. Uh, the Son of God came from heaven, <laughs> lived among us, didn't sin, mm. 
perfect life. Perfect life. Perfect. Loved us, loved mankind, perfect sacrifice. Yeah, went to the cross, mm -hmm. took my place, mm -hmm. took your place, paid, took the place. Paid that debt that we couldn't pay. Paid Hallelujah. It. And from the cross cried, it is finished. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I am finished. Mm -hmm. He says, it mm -hmm. is finished. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Mm -hmm. The Greek word there is to teleste. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the masterpiece. Mm -hmm. The painter paints his masterpiece. Mm -hmm. He steps back and says, to teleste. Mm -hmm. The sculptor sculpts the perfect uh, oh. statue. He steps back to teleste. Complete. We look at the cross. No imperfection. Yeah, to teleste. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be added mm -hmm. to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that ought to set our hearts <laughs> Hallelujah. afire every Sunday. Amen. Uh, and why, why isn't it? Well, I think, again, we look at the world and our earthly life more than we look at the spiritual and our eternal life. And, Mike, uh, in addition to celebrating what Jesus has done at the cross, what Jesus accomplished by His resurrection, I also encourage the church and myself to celebrate His intercession for us even now. Yeah. He is at the right hand of the Father interceding for yeah, us our great continually. High priest. And when we can focus on this great high priest that we have that, that is still mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, testifying in our behalf, if you will, and that we can go confidently to the throne of grace, knowing that we have a great high priest who has made it possible for us to enter there in our prayer time. And Mike, you and I both know that prayer is fundamental in this issue when we, when we talk about and think about the ministry of the church, the mission of the church, and the commandment of the church. Okay. Because the second thing he said in that verse was, you know, pray continually. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's do uh, in our day, many churches have done away with the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. They've turned it in. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not being critical. I'm just pointing something out. Mm -hmm. uh, they've turned a Wednesday night service or a Thursday night into a family night mm -hmm. and sports and uh, recreation and maybe a meal or something like that. Uh, and they have eliminated every aspect of corporate prayer of the church, mm -hmm. meeting together to pray. And I would like to point out that the church was born in a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And it continued in a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to, uh, I guess, uh, look at the book of Acts mm -hmm. and assess it, <laughs> It is the story of how the gospel of Jesus Christ advanced in 37 years. Mm. The whole Mediterranean area was evangelized mm. in 37 years. Mm -hmm. mm. But they did it by prayer. Mm. Now, I mean, they, they were obedient mm. to the call of prayer, mm -hmm. whatever the Lord was leading them to do lay their lives on the line, take the gospel wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Where are we at? Where should we be right now? Well, as you and I have talked before, uh, you talk about prayer meetings, you talk about corporate prayer, and tragically, even when there are prayer meetings being held in churches, the focus of the prayer seems to be more about physical needs than mm -hmm. spiritual, spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. And if we were to analyze our own prayer life and the lives of many of, of Christians, we would see that there is much more time spent praying for physical illness than for spiritual mm -hmm. salvation and healing. Yeah. And you and I know the greatest disease that man has is sin, mm -hmm. and the greatest malady that they have uh, will lead them to eternal death. Mm -hmm. And we pray for people not to die physically, but are we really earnestly praying on our knees for the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts, to give us a burden for lost people, and to move in the hearts of the people in our community to draw them to Jesus? Uh, the Bible says, not by power or by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And we recognize that we are trying to program 
and we were trying to organize and mm -hmm. we were trying to orchestrate mm -hmm. this matter of evangelism when in reality, as you have shared with me many times, it begins in earnest prayer for the needs of others. I, I can give you a quick testimony. When I was pastoring my first church, actually, uh, still a student at HLG, we met on Wednesday nights and we would pray and the whole focus of our praying was give us Rawls County for your glory. Yeah. Give us Rawls County for your glory. And that, that was the focus of our praying and God's spirit moved and many people came to Christ as a result of his spirit doing the work and his word being shared. And so prayer is essential in this matter of us taking the Great Commission and, and putting legs to it, if you will. Uh, and we have the privilege of doing that. And again, we have that privilege because of what Jesus has done for us. We couldn't approach the throne of grace apart from Christ Jesus. We have no uh, uh, ability to do that. And that privilege is being neglected. Yeah. And when you think about the things that God has given us to do, as you said, standing order, so to speak, Prayer is so essential in the body of Christ if we're going to see victories. We're not going to further the kingdom of heaven by man's programs. We've tried it, no. and in some cases it is a, excuse me for saying this, a cop-out Yeah. Uh, because we don't want to do the real work on our knees and go out publicly and, and personally taking the gospel of Jesus. Well, Christ. I heard someone say, I, I don't remember who it was, that said uh, uh, that in the matter of witnessing, mm. it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Hallelujah. You know, and uh, the closer that we draw to Jesus, Man, you know, one of my favorite passages is in Philippians where, you know, that I may know him. Power of his the resurrection. Power of his resurrection. Fellowship, Fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. sufferings. We don't want we don't want that. the <laughs> sufferings. We, we want the power of the resurrection, but the fellowship of his sufferings. Uh, the more we know Jesus, the more we're drawn to prayer. Hallelujah. Because it, you know, He's how do you show... He's our commander-in-chief. Yeah, He's our you, commander. We've got to talk to our commander-in-chief and let him talk to us how, if we're going to be obedient. How, how do you show love if yeah. you don't talk to somebody? Hallelujah. You know, Karen and I have been married 57 years. Yeah. That's a long time. It is a long time. Man, I've been beat up all, all those years, you know. Uh, yeah, when she I'll sees talk to this, Karen she, later. Yeah. yeah, I'll talk to Karen But later. let me tell you, if in all <coughs> those years I never said to her, you know, sweetheart, I love you, mm. wouldn't be much of a relationship, would it? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we need to be able to get alone mm -hmm. as believers with God. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, in our house and until recently I uh, had my office upstairs mm -hmm. and in one of the bedrooms that was my prayer room mm -hmm. and I just paste all these prayer requests all over the wall I think they're still there <laughs> uh, but I had to move my office downstairs and I don't want to disrupt the walls downstairs but the, the ability to sit down with God with an open Bible mm -hmm. and Talk to him, mm -hmm. and to, and and here's where the answer is going to come Amen. from. Amen. Not from, you know, I understand. it's going it's going to come from right here, mm -hmm. and from my uh, being able to learn his word. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've appreciated about you, <laughs> you have memorized a mm -hmm. lot of scripture, mm -hmm. and that's where the Christian heart ought to be. Amen. Because in the time of trouble, you may not have a access to a Bible. Amen. But if it's in your heart, That's right. it's written on your heart. Yeah. Okay. So here we, here we are uh, in the church. Uh, if I'm wrong on this, I, I want to be corrected. Donette, I want to be corrected if I'm wrong on this. I fear that the reason the church and its testimony is not powerful today and that people are not being drawn to it is because we lack the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, again, we're trying to operate in, in the flesh. We're, mm -hmm. we're fighting 
a spiritual battle with carnal weapons and we wonder why we can't win. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. On the right. contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Right. And so you and I have one of the weapons, and of course you, you talk about the armor in Ephesians. Uh, Paul goes on to say after he lists those different uh, parts of the armor, he says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions mm -hmm. with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for all the saints. This matter of being alert in our praying and praying according to God's will. And you know, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. We ask and don't receive because we ask amiss to consume right. it upon ourselves. Right. If we are praying for the kingdom of heaven to come and God's will to be done and we mean it, it's going to change our lives. It's going to make a difference so that our lives won't be consumed with all of this stuff that's passing away and we'll have an eternal perspective and our prayer life will, will be revolutionized when you, as you pointed out, we begin to spend time with our Lord. We begin to know Him better. And you talk about talking to Him. A big part of that prayer is listening, listening. to Him. Yeah. And as you say, the Word of God speaks to us because all Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, so the man of God can be perfect, well, thoroughly that, furnished. That word alert there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what that says to me is, the word that comes to my mind is desperate. Okay. A desperate, a desperate praying. Okay. Okay, we are living in desperate hours. Oh my. And the closer we get to the return of Christ, the more that is going to be the reality. Yeah. And yet the, we lack that desperate heart mm -hmm. for souls. Amen. Desperate heart for the church to be the church and, and for Jesus to be not just, not just remembered, mm -hmm. but to be exalted. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to come by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is. And again, it's going to come when we uh, deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow yeah. Him yeah. And, and spend the time in prayer that God has called us to, recognizing it is one of the spiritual weapons that we have to fight the spiritual battle that is real. And we have that privilege. And to neglect that privilege is in some cases to... Uh, slap Jesus in the face yes. because his death and resurrection is a privilege that has made that possible. You know, uh, many years ago when I was a young man, uh, I led the singing a lot for uh, Dr. J. Harold Smith, mm. who was a great evangelist in Southern Baptist. And uh, the first meeting that I had with him, uh, we stayed in the same hotel room. Mm. And when I went in the room, he was already there and he was coming off of a 40 day fast and he was making this stuff in a blender, this green stuff, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it had all kinds of oh, wow, stuff sure. in it, you know, and I came in and he said, hi, Mike. And he said, uh, you want a glass? And I said, no, I already think I have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that night after the service, it was powerful service. And we came back to the uh, hotel room and he said, Mike, get your Bible. Let's, let's have a time of prayer here in, mm. in the word. And I forget what the passage was that we read. And uh, he said, let's pray. So we, we each got down on our knees uh, beside our beds and I prayed and it was a pathetic prayer, you know, mm -hmm. and then Harold prayed. Mm. And in a little, I'd never heard anybody pray like that. Mm. A little bit, he came over to me. He was a big, tall man, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, white hair, mm -hmm. looked like an Old Testament prophet. <laughs> he got down on his knees behind me and he put his arms over me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he started praying for me. Mm -hmm. And I could feel the tears dropping on the back of my neck. Mm -hmm. And I have never forgot that moment because in that moment, God came in that motel room. Mm -hmm. And I sensed in that man 
the secret of his power mm. was prayer. Mm. I long to see that mm. not only in my life, mm -hmm. but in the life of the church. Amen. Amen. And uh, like, like I said, we're living in desperate times and you and I could talk about <laughs> the return of the Lord, mm. Uh, mm. you know, for a year and a half. Praise maybe. the Lord. <laughs> uh, because I do, I do believe, I, I, I believe we are in the last days. I, I believe as well, Mike. Uh, there are too many things, you know, the New Testament talks, describes in detail what those days will look like. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the things that we see all around us, it is evident that, that things are happening at yeah. an accelerated pace. Uh, to bring about uh, God's perfect plan in, in His return. Is the church ready for it? That's the question. I, I'm convinced, number one, we're not ready for the suffering that is coming because the reality of it is that is a promise of the Bible just as surely as all these other promises are there, that uh, we will be persecuted. Jesus Himself said it. And He said, He that stands firm to the end will be saved. And so we recognize that we, we, we need to understand it's coming and be prepared for it and recognize that the eternal is the answer. And if you've got a minute, I'd just like to read 2 Thessalonians. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, one of the things we need to be reminded of that when Christ returns, that the, we will be, the Christians will be vindicated essentially, but also we need to be reminded that those that have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ will be destroyed, will yeah. be separated for all eternity. So it ought to put an urgency in our life mm -hmm. to be on our knees in prayer for the kingdom to come, but recognize that when that kingdom comes physically in the person of Jesus Christ, it will mean devastation, devastation. for those outside of Christ. Oh, wow, wow. Well, my brother and sister in Christ, let me tell you what a time this is uh, that we live in. Uh, this is this is an age in which we need to step out in faith with God and share the gospel. Uh, this is Mike McKenzie. I've enjoyed being with you. I want to thank Bill again. Thank you uh, for Mike. being with me. Appreciate and, it. And uh, we we hope and pray for you today that something has been said here today that would uh, just set your heart afire. Hallelujah. We have an opportunity in these days to make a great impact for mm. the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So let's do it in Jesus' name. I want to thank Donette and all the staff here at the radio station. Radio station. <laughs> this is a TV station. Uh, thank them for the opportunity to be here today. Mm. And may God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name we Amen. pray. Amen. And sweet is the way he can. Down.